This video is a little different from my usual ones. For a start, it's my first non-Irish video, and hopefully there will be more to follow in the coming months. Second, normally I plan to go somewhere to film. In this one, while on holiday in Jerez, in the mountains in the north of Portugal, I stumbled upon a Roman road. More accurately, while being driven in a jeep along a very hot and dusty road, the temperature was in the high 30s, trying to fight our way through a large herd of mountain goats after entering Jerez National Park, I discovered we were following much of the route of an old Roman road. Along this road, every Roman mile, or a little under 1500 metres, are large collections of milestones, along with other remains. Indeed, this is the largest number of Roman milestones in Europe, with a total of 281. The survival of this many milestones is probably because the road passes through Cerro de Jerez, or Jerez Mountains, facilitating their preservation. The delightfully named Via Nava, New Road or New Route, or Via 18 from the Antonine Itinerary, a Roman document brought from the 3rd century AD, which recorded Roman roads, their distances and stations along the way, ran from the Roman city of Bracada Augusta, now called Braga in Portugal, to Asturica Augusta, now called Astorga in Spain, covering around 210 Roman miles, or 330 kilometers approximately. The first 34 Roman miles are in Portugal, between Braga and the frontier post at Portela do Ani. The rest is in Spain. It is called Via Nova because it replaced a previous road which went around the Jerez Mountains. Fortunately for us, the new road would run through the mountains instead of avoiding them. This probably resulted in the preservation of so many milestones and other evidence of Roman occupation, such as evidence of bridges and quarries where the stones were obtained. Moreover, much of the stretch running between milestone 29 and 34 is inside Jerez Forest Park and runs along the top part of the Amman River Valley in an area with few settlements. Undoubtedly, this contributed much to its preservation. Also, fortunately, the construction of hydroelectric dams in the area did not affect the road much. Only a small part of it was submerged. One of the reasons for this is that in this area, the road reaches quite a high altitude. The mountain range climbs to a maximum of 1,000 to 1,300 metres. However, the Roman road does not quite reach this high seems to vary between 600 and 700 metres mainly, though the frontier with Spain at Portela do Arming is around 800 metres high. Although part of the road is wide, other parts run alongside steep slopes and cliffs, while parts of it are also now reduced to a track through the forest. I only followed the Portuguese side of the road, although the driver did enter Spain, but only for around one minute. It is probably possible to follow the entire length of the road from Braga to Astorga, though different means of transport would probably have to be used to do this. It was built around 80 AD by the governor of Hispania, or more correctly, Hispania Tarraconesis, Gaius Capitanus Rantius Quirinal Valerius Festus. He was a friend or amicus of Emperor Vespasian. During the year of the four emperors, he was commander of Legio III Augustus in Africa and contributed to Vespasian's becoming emperor by assassinating the proconsul of Africa who supported a rival claimant. He is mentioned briefly by Tacitus who calls him a young man of extravagant habits and immoderate ambition. Perhaps it is his ambition which did for him in the end, as despite serving Vespasian and Titus well, he seems to have fallen afoul of the next Flavian Emperor, and was forced by Domitian to kill himself. As can be seen by driving along the road, or indeed walking on it, building Via Nava must have been a major and difficult undertaking. Any Roman road involved considerable work, including levelling the terrain, digging ditches, and then laying the various levels of stones, sand and gravel. Added to this on Via Nava was the building of bridges, quarrying stone for the road and for the milestones, the construction of mansions, a type of way station, and perhaps most difficult of all, adapting the road to the difficult terrain and climate of the road when crossing Serra do Jerez. 
Although at times the road runs along a wide track, at others it hugs cliffs very closely. While today much of it goes through forest, one wonders whether this was true when it was built 2,000 years ago. In relation to climate, while the area is very dry in summer, and subject to devastating forest fires, in winter it is one of the wettest parts of Portugal, and at times after storms the Oming River can rise suddenly by a few metres. Obviously this can have a detrimental effect on constructed structures. While there are many milestones existing, there is relatively little left of the road itself. Returning to the milestones, while along the 300 or so kilometres between Braga and Astorga there are numerous archaeological remains, such as bridges or remnants of bridges, baths, 13 mansios, official stopping posts, and other items, on the Portuguese part that I visited, what are most interesting are the milestones. These round columns were placed every Roman mile, approximately 1,480 metres, and contained inscriptions with valuable information. Obviously this included geographical details, such as distance, but also political information, notably the name of the emperor when they were put up and some of his achievements. For example, among what is engraved in one column in mile 14 is the following. In the time of the Emperor Titus Caesar Vespasianus, son of Vespasian Augustus Pontifex Maximus, Triminica Potestate for the ninth time, Emperor for the fifteenth time, father of the Patria, consul for the eighth time, the Via Nava was built by Gaius Calpitanus Rantius Quirinal Valerius Festus, Legato Augusti Propitori, 14 miles to Bracara. It's important to point out two things here. First, I've omitted a little part of this inscription, and second, and more importantly, it was not written out in full. Many words are abbreviated, such as IMP for Imperatore or Emperor. Furthermore, time and the weather have not been kind to these engravings. Nowadays, most are unreadable. However, fortunately, many were transcribed in the past. Indeed, volume 17 of the amazing work Corpus Inscriptonium Latinarum, or CIL, is dedicated to them. The milestones are best preserved between miles 29 and 34. They occur in small groups, and in some cases their heights vary. This may be the result of damage. Furthermore, not all the milestones are in their original position. Some were found buried and re-erected. Others have been moved. For example, archaeologists think that several may have been moved when the road through the forest was being rebuilt. In Portel do Arming, there are a no small number of stones in what is now a, a car park. However, in an unmarked room in what was the frontier post with Spain, there is a room with a large number of them. It is a type of clandestine museum made even more interesting by an adjacent room with cannons, but which was unlit, preventing filming. These milestones were brought there in the 1980s, when the frontier post was being built. Importantly, and fortunately, an effort has been made recently to provide information about these milestones. Nowadays, there are boards by them providing information, while the same information can also be found online. In addition to the inscriptions on the milestones, what is interesting is that not all of them have the same date. They were erected at different times. For example, on mile 31, where there is a set of 21 milestones, seven of them have inscriptions, with the emperors responsible varying from Hadrian, who ruled from 117 to 138, to Linesius, 308 to 24. On mile 32, there are 23 stones, of which 7 have inscriptions, ranging from Hadrian again to the Census, 351 to 53. At mile 34, there are inscriptions ranging from Titus and Domitian, 79 to 81, from when the road was built, to Hadrian or Trajan, and to Magnentius, 350 to 353. Interestingly, the Census was a brother of Magnentius and made Caesar by him. Magnensis usurped power from Constantine's, one of the sons of Constantine the Great, 
but was then defeated by the latter's brother, Constantius II, at the very important Battle of Mons Celicus. Both Magnentius and Decentius only held power for a short period, but their names appear on the milestones here, illustrating their very important function. Other emperors mentioned include Nerva, 96-98, Caracalla, 198-217, datable from the year 214, Maximinius Trax and his son Maximus, 235-238, and Decius, 249-251. Also, in mile 31, a small minor stone was found buried. This had traces of ochre paint raising the possibility that the milestones may have actually been painted. The milestones of Via Nava are unique, due to the large number, but also their settings in what is a very beautiful and wild part of Portugal, with some really amazing views. Following the road, even for a few kilometers, is a very interesting experience. In the middle of the heat and the dust and the goat herds, Climbing the mountains, entering the forest, transposed between the past and the present, is a very different way of coming into contact with Rome and gaining another understanding of the complex jigsaw that is history. One that is definitely worth doing.